Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another video to help you guys if you guys are stuck on what to cook for dinner tonight. I am coming at you with four quick, easy, and mostly healthy Instant Pot recipes. One of the hardest things in my opinion about losing weight is choosing what to eat and making substitutions or making restaurant quality food at home that tastes amazing and isn't super boring. I find nutrition is usually where I trip up because anyone can jump on the treadmill, let's face it. So I wanna do a lot more of this style of video showing you guys meal inspo. Actually, I don't know if he's watching, but if he does, cause he should, if he wants to win fiance of the year award. Um, Justin actually got me my Instant Pot hot just the other day I am so thankful to him I had mentioned it in passing because I was reading a magazine and I was like oh I would like to try an instant pot and he came home with it and then he was like do you know what you should do a week of instant pot meals for your YouTube so we could thank Justin for the video idea for the instant pot love him to death um, I do love the instant pot I'm still playing around with it I haven't done desserts but it is a great tool if you guys are looking for a quick easy one pot like minimal mess meals especially if you're a busy mom or a busy working professional so yeah let me know what you guys think would you like to see more food style videos or workout videos from me i feel like the food videos i love to do them and i think they're so helpful for the reasons i mentioned before but i want to do what you guys want to see and i don't want to keep this introduction too long because someone has come outside our condo to blow the leaves so let's get straight into these recipes so we're starting off with a bang with this Olive Garden inspired Zappa Toscana or Tuscan soup. This recipe is a little less on the healthy side, but it's still way healthier than going out to eat. And I'm going to show you how you can recreate this and even be slightly more healthy too. I usually do a recipe like this once a week just to indulge a little bit while still not being too unhealthy. So I'm taking some yellow flesh potatoes. I used actually three, although this recipe called for four and cubing these into one inch cubes and setting them aside for later. Once you've done that, I'm also going to take one white onion and I'm just going to mince this pretty finely, not too finely. Um, I only showed you half, but we will be doing the whole onion for this recipe. I'm then going to mince six or seven cloves of garlic. Does anyone else struggle with using the garlic crusher like I do? It is like the bane of my existence. And then I'm taking just some regular bacon and my kitchen scissors. Get you some kitchen scissors. And I am chopping up four slices of bacon. I like to do this before I cook the bacon, which you guys will see why a little bit later. For this recipe, I'm using hot Italian sausages because they taste the best. But for recipes like this, what I like to do is take these sausages out of their casing. It's kind of disgusting and gross, but I basically use a sharp knife to make a slit in the casing and I will jimmy the sausages out. Disgusting, but trust me, it's way better. Otherwise, you might choke on the skin afterwards. And then I just mash the sausage so that we have ground pork. I'm going to let my Instant Pot heat up to the saute setting and once it's hot I'm adding in one tablespoon of olive oil and I'm going to add in the sausage meat that we crumbled up. I'm just cooking this up, breaking it into smaller pieces as it cooks until it browns up nicely. So as you can see, we're starting to lose the pink. Once this is completely cooked through, I'm gonna remove the sausage to another plate. You don't have to cover it because we're adding it back later. And I'm gonna add our chopped bacon and saute that until it's nice and crispy and remove it from the Instant Pot. Once we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our chopped onion as well as our chopped minced garlic as well into the Instant Pot while it's still on the saute setting. And I'm gonna let that cook down for about two or three minutes till the onion's translucent. We're gonna go ahead and add our cooked crumbled sausage back into the pot along with the chopped potatoes that we had earlier. And then I'm also adding in a whole container of chicken broth. This is the low sodium version and I urge you to use this because less sodium and otherwise it will just be way too salty tasting. And then I give everything a nice stir. I like to make sure the potatoes are covered by the chicken broth at this point. And I'm gonna add in some Italian seasoning, which I'm doing right here. So once you've done this, you're gonna close the lid on your Instant Pot and we're gonna cook this under high pressure for five minutes, followed by doing a natural pressure release for 10 minutes and then a controlled quick release. But while this is all going on and cooking and heating up, I'm taking some pre-washed kale and just chunking it up into some pieces in a bowl. 
So when the Instant Pot is done, you can do a control quick release at the end of a 10 minute natural pressure release. And it should look a little something like this. Once you stir the soup together, and this is how you can keep it healthier, you can just go ahead and add your kale and eat it as it, which I do sometimes. But to amp it up a notch, we're gonna make it creamy. So I'm using one cup of heavy cream. You could use half and half too, again, to make it a little healthier. And I'm gonna make a slurry with one tablespoon of flour and just mix this together. Once everything's nicely combined and we have a slurry, this is gonna really thicken up our soup. I add this back into the Instant Pot and I'm gonna start adding in our kale. My Instant Pot is switched off at the moment, so it's not on any setting, but when you stir this together, the kale's gonna wilt. Everything's still gonna be really hot, so you just wanna stir it together until everything's pretty well combined. I add in some more kale, and when the kale's wilted, it should look a little something like this, and it's making me hungry because this is like my favorite. Then we're just gonna go ahead and garnish this with our chopped bacon. So for me, I only do a tiny bit of bacon because it is high calorie and I'm trying to lose weight, but Justin can have all the bacon in the world. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and garnish this with some Parmesan cheese, some freshly grated Parmesan. And you guys, this soup is seriously a flavor bomb. Like it is so delicious with the cream, without the cream. It's truly one of my favorite meals. For our next recipe, I am gonna show you guys how I make my Taco Tuesday taco meat. I'm gonna be doing a loaded taco salad, but also for those of you guys who aren't watching your carbs, I'm gonna show you how I make this meat into quesadillas too, which I did for Justin. So we're gonna start off by cutting up one whole onion. You're just gonna chop this up. It doesn't have to be too fine. I like my onions chunky. And then on the saute setting, I'm adding a tablespoon of olive oil to our Instant Pot, along with the onions and letting those cook down until they become translucent. Still on the saute um, setting, I'm adding in some lean ground beef I go right into our Instant Pot as well and breaking that up into smaller pieces and letting it brown. Once it's brown, I'm adding in six to seven cloves of minced garlic and just giving that a mix around too. And then we're also gonna add in some store-bought taco seasoning, which I sometimes make my own, but I was feeling lazy today. We're also gonna go ahead at this point and add in a can of diced chilies. These are just the old El Paso brand. One cup of tomato sauce and a half a cup of chunky medium salsa. Again, the salsa is store-bought. Mix everything together and we're gonna cook this under high pressure for 20 minutes in the Instant Pot. So you have time while you're doing this to create um, a pico de gallo, which I love. So I'm chopping up one red onion. Now this, I'm gonna make sure I cut it up really, really fine. I put in the work on this red onion because for pico, you really want all of these little things to be chopped super finely. And I'm gonna add it into a bowl. I'm also using some fresh cilantro, you guys. You guys really need to add this to your pico if you're gonna make it. It makes the best difference. And I'm mincing that up too before adding it to the bowl along with our onions. I'm also gonna finally top a jalapeno pepper as well. Um, again, finally, otherwise your mouth will be crying for heat. And then I am using Roma tomatoes because I find they hold up the best to this recipe. And I use about four or five and just cut the tomatoes into chunks. You don't have to cut these up super finely. And then add that to the bowl along with the juice of half of a lemon. I literally need to get a lemon juicer because, sorry, that was a lime, not a lemon. And then salt and pepper and a clove or two of garlic, fresh garlic in there. Once you add this in, we're gonna start stirring to combine, but I really wanna urge you guys to make sure that you don't just mush everything together and make it into a paste. Take your time to softly stir and combine everything like I'm doing here so everything stays separate, but combined if you make sense. So it should be done when it looks a little something like this. Our meat is still cooking, so once the high pressure for 20 minutes is done, do a natural release for 15 minutes, and that will allow you to prep your salad toppings. So I'm halving up some grape tomatoes, and cutting some jalapenos into circles, and we've got some red onions, and I'm also gonna cook some sweet corn. So I put my sweet corn directly on a pan under medium heat, and then I spread it out and just stir it slowly until it kind of chars up, and you guys, seriously, this tastes delicious. There's no other way I wanna eat my corn. To assemble our salad bowls, I'm using a mixture of butter, lettuce, and romaine. And then my pro tip here is Doritos, you guys. Yes, these are literally five Doritos. I counted out the nacho cheese flavor, but they will amp your salad up. And they're not high carb if you're only using five. It's okay, treat yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those red onions, our tomatoes, our jalapenos, and then also some sweet corn to our salad bowls. I kind of like to make everything pretty. 
This is some Texas black bean um, salsa that I got from the store. So I just added a dollop of that in along with the pico that we made earlier. And then also some guac that I had made earlier that just has tomato, garlic, red onion, creamy avocado and cilantro in it. And then our meat is done. So you wanna go ahead and add that right on the top of your bowls. I add some old sharp cheddar cheese because cheese is life. Have the cheese, you guys. And then this avocado ranch dressing goes directly on top. And you have the most flavor bomb salad ever. Like, this is so good. I couldn't even finish it all, to be honest. This was way too big of a portion. But if you guys are living with someone who doesn't want salad or, you know, they're not afraid of the carbs, you can make these into tortilla quesadillas. So I'm taking one medium quesadilla and then I'm just going to top that with our black bean salsa. It's called Texas caviar. I'm also adding our red onions and jalapenos right on top of that. And then our sweet corn as well. And then once you have that, go ahead and spoon in your meat. And then we're going to go ahead and top that with the same cheddar cheese. So we're literally using all the same toppings, but this is just for Justin because he would rather have it in a tortilla. Although he ate half of my salad too, I'm not going to lie. And then all you're going to do is kind of smush everything down. You want to fold it in half. And then I toast this on a dry pan over medium heat just to melt the cheese before cutting it in half and serving. Delicious. Next up, you guys, we are making a healthier version of Thai basil chicken. I love this. Super, super healthy and high protein. So I am taking shallots. They're basically sweeter red onions. This is three shallots, and I am chopping those up finely. I'm also chopping up some fresh basil as well. We're also going to add basil at the end because you can't have enough basil. These are red Thai chilies, and if you can find them, they really make the recipe, but they are spicy, so I would encourage you guys to remove most of the seeds before chopping them finely in the recipe, but these are great in Asian recipes, so when they have them in stock, I always make sure to stock up. I also use about six to seven cloves of garlic that I will mince, but I just didn't show you mincing it because struggle bus is real. And then I'm also going to grate some fresh ginger. I'm going to grate about two to three tablespoons. I will show you guys the amount. But ginger, again, really makes Asian recipes. And then we're going to make a little sauce. This is the brand of um, Asian dressings that I like to use to make my sauce. So I just wanted to show you guys that. But basically, you're doing two tablespoons of soy sauce. I always use low sodium because we don't want to add any salt. And then I'm taking a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar for a little bit of tang and then a teaspoon of fish sauce. Now, I don't eat any fish, seafood, sushi, you name it, and I hate the taste of fish. But in Asian and Thai cooking, this really makes a huge difference and it doesn't taste like fish at all. And then I'm also going to do a teaspoon of sesame oil and mix that all together. So when our Instant Pot is hot on the saute setting, we're going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of olive oil, half of our ginger, we'll add the other half later. You're going to throw in all of your garlic, all of your Thai red chilies as well, and then our shallots. And we're going to cook that down and let that saute just until the onions become translucent. You guys, this smells amazing at this step, like you're going to want to dive into the Instant Pot. I'm then going to go ahead and add our fresh chopped basil and let that wilt down as well before adding our protein. So I'm using organic lean ground chicken. This is full of protein. Pro move. Don't put in your paper like I did. And I'm going to break that into smaller pieces and cook that until it starts to brown. I did also add a little bit of hoisin sauce to give it a little bit of color because it's very pale as well as the sauce that we mixed up earlier. And it should look a little bit like this at this point. All you're going to do then is add in one cup of chicken broth, again, low sodium to your Instant Pot, and you're going to cook this under high pressure for three minutes, which isn't much time at all before doing a natural release. While that's cooking, I made some white basmati rice. That's my portion. I like to go light on the rice and Justin's portion. And then once you've done the quick pressure release and your Instant Pot's opened up, all you have to do is take your chicken mixture and top your basmati rice with it. It should look a little something like this. So delicious and so full of protein and so flavorsome, although ground chicken sounds a little bit unappetizing. And then all I do is top it with some fresh basil. And you can see I have a hungry fiance here who is waiting for dinner. It's like, hurry up, babe. So I'm trying to hustle hard. Our last recipe that we're going to make are is one of my favorites, one of Justin's too. These are garlic butter steak bites. I'm taking some beef. I like to use beef tenderloin, but if you want to use something a little cheaper, you could use strip loin as well. This is just my favorite cut of meat. So I take a few fillets of that and I'm going to cube them into one inch pieces. Then once I've cubed up my meat, this is something I always do, even if I'm cooking whole steaks, I take a paper towel and I blot off 
any excess moisture from the meat. This is gonna ensure when you cook it that it doesn't just steam in the meat and turn it gray. It gives a really nice cook to it. I'm gonna also add some salt. Beef takes a lot of salt and pepper and also some Montreal steak spice as well, which isn't necessary, but I love it. And then I set that aside to let it come to room temperature, which is what I always do before cooking my steaks as well. And then I'm just gonna work on our sides. So I'm hobbing up some bread mini potatoes at this point, and I'm gonna add that into a bowl along with a tablespoon of minced garlic and then also some fresh herbs that I also chopped. This is thyme, oregano, and rosemary. And I'm just gonna add this right into our bowl. And then I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil and some salt and pepper and mix it together. Seriously, you guys, I think I make the best potatoes because the seasoning is just, ugh, I over season them and they taste amazing. Everyone always compliments me. And then we're just gonna put them on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake those for 25 minutes at 425 degrees in the oven. To our instant pot with one tablespoon of olive oil on the saute setting, I'm adding in our beef. Now you might wanna do this in batches because the key to this recipe is making sure you can cook in a single layer with nothing touching. You don't want the meat to steam and turn gray like it's kinda of doing here. You want to get beyond this point and you want it to get a nice crust and then flip it and cook the other side. Once it's cooked and gets a crust on it like this, you wanna remove this from the instant pot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half cup of beef broth and deglaze the pan. So I'm scraping up all those delicious brown bits from the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in seven cloves of minced garlic, add in as much as you want. I could have done more this day, but this was all the garlic I had left and stirring. I'm also gonna add in some pepper at this point, as well as three tablespoons of butter. Now this is a compound butter that I made myself with fresh garlic, parsley, and herbs, but regular unsalted butter works well. And then we're gonna add back in our seared steak along with any steak juices before we cook this under manual pressure, high pressure for 10 minutes. Once your potatoes come out of the oven, they should look something like this. And then when your Instant Pot beeps, do a natural release for five minutes followed by a quick release and your steak will look a little something like this. And it is so tender and so delicious. I just garnished it with parsley and then I also served it with a side salad, but it was in a separate bowl, so I forgot to film it. But this is such a good tried and trusted meal. So yeah, you guys, there you have it, a week of Instant Pot meals. You can actually freeze all of the leftovers if you have too much. Usually I will give leftovers to Justin for lunch because he does physical labor, so he needs to have a hearty meal at lunch. And then I'll have them for dinner again two times of the week. I'll choose one to have. Let me know which recipe was you guys' favorite. Also in the comments below, I would love to hear if you guys have an Instant Pot and what your favorite Instant Pot recipe is because I'm looking for new ideas. So yeah, if you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe because I would love to have you guys back for more videos. I will be doing one to two a week and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.